this is going to be an idea that's going to shape the evolution of the world economy, uh, world politics for the coming years. I'm still influenced by big thinkers in history. Be challenging the conventional wisdom because sometimes the conventional wisdom is wrong. And it incentivizes and motiva motivates people to work for a bigger idea. To the extent that you can reduce the impact of where you're born, what conditions you're born under, and what kind of impediments that creates, I think capitalism is better for it. The idea of free markets has had an enormous uh, impact. There is no guarantee that uh, economic growth is going to lead to, to democracy. The interesting question is not uh, why in a, each one of these episodes there is one individual or a few that get it right, uh, but rather why the majority of people don't get it. We need to think about the world differently. We need to think about our business differently. There is something quite quite wrong when you see the uh, Chinese authorities or the Iranian authorities or the Russian authorities uh, uh, you know, suppress their citizens and uh, uh, interfere with free speech and all kinds of opposition is, is clamped down upon. So I think, uh, I think there are certain basic rights and those very basic rights are just much easier to, uh, to, to develop and to take root in a democratic regime. Think of um, four boxes. And this is a great management tool. You know, on, on one axis you have what's important, and on the other axis you have what's urgent. Individual companies are very good at focusing at what's important and urgent. Companies that survive also are very good at ignoring what's not important and what's not urgent. The real challenge is the remaining two boxes. On the one hand, you have what's important but not urgent, and then you have what's urgent but not important. And the key issue is to make sure that y you focus on the important but not urgent. The way we perceive things is such that we uh, don't fully receive process information that is inconsistent with our prior beliefs. And the result of that is that we come to uh, see the world in a way that we see as validating our views because those views that are not consistent with our views we somehow don't perceive. So people are talking about going from the G7 to G20. I feel we're going from the G7 to not even G2 or G1 but to G0 to a system that is of global economic and political disorder. You have income inequality, you have the political frictions that stem from income inequality. And eventually you have a capitalist system uh, which A, doesn't work for everyone, and B, there are lots of forces trying to subvert it to reduce competition and so on. The uh, income inequality is worsening in the United States. And part of the story does appear to be uh, globalization. Another part of the story, though, is not globalization. The, another part is technical progress. Speaking of the future, Professor Stiglitz, and in conclusion, tell me, what's your next big idea? What's the new thing you're working on now? To try to understand better uh, the design of financial architecture. One of the questions that I want to tackle is, uh, is the relationship between individualism and, and society. My next big idea would be something that you and I have discussed over time, which is, you know, why being an outsider is so important in today's world. I'm certainly thinking about uh, how we're going to have a global economy where uh, there's going to be economic and financial challenges for advanced economies, where the biggest uh, traditional power, uh, the United States, is in relative decline, and how much this leads to economic, financially, and trading uh, tensions and instability, and of course, can spill over also in the, in the geopolitical one sense. There is so much prejudice against finance why, uh, I want to try to articulate what is good and what is bad about it, and, and so that people don't reach blanket decisions. I think it's a powerful technology, and, and I want to get at that. The kind of corporations that we have and, and, and the way they set about, uh, you know, framing what their objectives is, what their responsibilities are. And one of the things I want to think about is what should be uh, a corporation's responsibilities? What type of social, economic, and political uh, environments can, can uh, support that kind of individualistic behavior, I think is a very interesting question and I would, one I would like to think more about.
It is a great pleasure to be able to address you like this today. Although, of course, it would have been an even greater pleasure if I could have joined you in person. I was greatly honored to find that I had been chosen as one of foreign policy's top global thinkers. Honored and at the same time humbled. During the last two decades, my life has swung between periods when I had ample time for thought and contemplation and periods when I hardly had time to catch thoughts of the wing because there was so, so much to do. But in all these years, the one thought that has stayed with me is that we all have to work together to try to improve any situation. That is not an original thought. I think it's as old as humanity, that there is strength in numbers, that we must learn to help each other. But yet, that is a thought that never ages. I wish that I could meet all of you to talk over all the things I have thought about over the last seven years, during which many changes took place in this world. When I came out of detention on the 13th of this month, I suddenly found myself in a new world, as it were. The, the people who came to, to support me, to offer me their greetings and their continued belief in our cause, were much younger than the ones with whom I had worked many years ago. A whole new generation, or perhaps I should say several new generations, had joined us. And so it was a younger world. At the same time, it was a slightly stranger world because all these young people were so much more, so much more familiar with the new IT revolution than I am. And that really made me happy. It encouraged me and it invigorated me because IT technology means simply better communications, better communications between different peoples, between different generations. I do not know what I am supposed to have contributed to the great thinkers of this globe. All I can say is that I stand ready to be taught, to learn, to learn from the new thinking, to learn from younger people, to learn from those who have spent the years that I have spent in detention out in the free world, seeing what is going on, and from that seeing, learning to think again. Because we have to think again and again and again. And yet, we never come to the end of our thinking. We never come to the final conclusion. And that is the beauty of human nature, that we can go on, we can keep on going forward, going upwards, going outwards in our minds and in our hearts. This is not the ideas of a thinker that I'm expressing to you. This, these are just the ideas of someone who has lived apart from most of the world for many years and has now come out to join you and to ask for your support, for your help, for your advice, for your friendship. I don't know whether this is what a global thinker is supposed to be saying, but whatever I have said, it comes from my heart, and I hope that you will look upon it kindly. Thank you very much.